Hey guys, it's me Roland. Welcome to Bilingual Analytics. Today, I'm going to show you an absolute best practice with time intelligence and calendar tables. In the previous video, I was showing you how to create your day table and how to use some of the time intelligence functions. There is one more thing that I need to show you. Sooner or later, your file size and data model size are going to increase. Your report will handle more and more data and therefore its size has to increase. But what if I tell you there is a relatively easy way of significantly reducing the size of your data model? Let me jump over to my PC to show you this cool technique. Power BI is smart enough to build a date hierarchy with year, quarter, month, and day for every date field in your model. It means that if your report has date fields such as order date, invoice date, begin date, or any other date fields, Power BI will auto-generate a hidden calendar table for every single one of those fields. Let me repeat this. For every single date field in your model, Power BI will create an extra calendar table. The reason behind this is to help new users to navigate in Power BI, but you're no longer a new user. You are an advanced user, someone who wants to create a super lean data model to ensure that report consumers can quickly open and use your report. First of all, let me show you with Dex Studio what's happening here. In this video, I'm not going to explain what Dex Studio is or how to use it. I'm just going to show you a couple of ways of checking your model size. On the ribbon, select Advanced and then View Metrics. Checking the summary page on the bottom, we can see immediately our model size. If we click on the tables, we can find five tables. Our sales record that we imported to Power BI and four date tables. So what can we do to get rid of these auto-generated date tables? What if I tell you that we only have to untick a single box under Power BI settings? That would be mind-blowing, right? I kid you not, it is just a single box to untick. We go to File, Options and Settings, and Options. We have two options. We can turn off auto-generated calendar tables for all Power BI files, or just for the current one. If you want to turn it off for good, stay here on Global Settings, Data Load, and in the middle, untick auto date time. If you only want to turn off for the current file, scroll down to current file, data load, and once again, in the middle, auto date time. I would strongly recommend doing the second option, as in some cases, it could be handy. You can see immediately that our date hierarchy has just disappeared. And that's it. With this checkbox, you just saved heaps of space and made your data model more streamlined or leaner. Let's head back to Dex Studio and see the result in size. Let me show you one very extreme example of this auto daytime feature. Imagine that you have a pricing table where you have begin and end date for a price. These dates represent periods when a certain price is valid. In some cases, when we don't know the exact end date for a price, we could just type in 9,999 as a year. It makes sense from a business perspective as the system will always be able to pick up valid pricing, even when we are long gone. But you have to remember that Power BI will auto-generate every single day until the end of year 9999. What are the implications on your data model size? Let me show you. I have imported pricing data to this Power BI report. And I also kept the auto daytime function enabled. Just a few lines of pricing. 
it should not be more than a couple of kilobytes, right? Again, let's check it in Dex Studio. Holy smokes. Look at the file size. As you can see here, we have a TV price with the end date of the 31st of December 9999 and that has bloated our model size. But if we turn off auto date in the local file settings, just how we did that with our, the other report, the file size is going to decrease immediately. So let's do that. That's what I'm talking about. It's also important to remember that if you use Calendar Auto, you may run into the same issue, even if you turn off Auto Date Time. So to solve this, just make sure that you base your calendar table on your fact table or fact tables. It's safe to say that in most cases, your fact table won't contain that many years. Thanks for watching. I hope you now have a better understanding about auto date time in Power BI. If you like the video, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new video. Stay tuned for more training videos to come. See ya.